Hey everybody, how's it going guys? We're gonna look at the ESL Major League once again with another best of three today and we're having two teams going up against each other that had a bit of a rough time so far in the season. Well Met is going up against El Nexo and especially the Spaniards are one of the teams where everybody expected them to do exceptionally well in the Major League but so far they have won only one of their best of three matches and they have lost two. Well Met is in the exact same position and both of them are really aiming for another victory here since they want to participate in the playoffs. The first map is going to be Sky Temple where we're seeing Well Met with a double healer composition and they are playing Sonya against the Illidan comp that Well Met is using here which is one of very it's a very good pick actually against Illidan pick that teams like Fnatic are using as well since you're trying to do a lot of burst damage after leap initiation. We're gonna find out if Well Met can take it here. They just lost recently against El Nexo in a best of three series without even taking a map. It was a crushing defeat and El Nexo of course they're gonna try and repeat that today. Map number one is going to be on Sky Temple so guys let's get ready for the first map between El Nexo and Well Met here at the ESL Major League. Alright, welcome everybody to game number one of the ESL Major League. Today we're having in our first game El Nexo versus Well Met. This is map number one, Sky Temple. And to the left side we're seeing Vortex for Well Met on Uther, Alistar on Reyna, Grandpa Ketto on Rega, Lucifron on ETC, and LOL versus XD on Sonya. To the right side it is Well Met with Hazops on Vala. We have Soccer playing Tacita, Nomi on Murden, Shadowmar subbing in today as playing Brightwing, and we have Get Amherd on Illidan. This is the ESL Major League. I'm Carlo. With me is Kilarius, and we're going to bring you the coverage here on Sky Temple. All right. So all versus XD, Vortex, and Lucifron going to head on through the middle. Lucifron, as you said before, on that ETC has really found a home with it as of late. But Socket with the Oracle does reveal everything moving towards us, and we'll be able to push them away. Yeah, we have a double healer comp on the side of El Nexo in this game. They uh, immediately picked Uther and Rhaegar, picked them away from the opponent to decide to go into Brightwing, which on Sky Temple makes a lot of sense. The picks for El Nexo, very, very tanky. Sonya picked as a counter to Illidan to just leap in and try and stun him out. Then, of course, using with Spear and Slam the burst damage that you have on her together with, uh, with Reyna that they picked later on to burst Illidan down, which is going to be one of their main objectives. They took the burst healers away from uh, Well Met, and that's the... Uh, strategy that they're running here. And for Well Met, it's really going to be trying to take this lineup down with the damage that they have. And they do have damage with Vala, with Tassadar, mm -hmm. and of course with Illidan himself. Now the story for a little bit is going to be in top lane here. As Nomi isn't finding too much room to roam, he's just trying to poke in at the back, see if he can get a storm ball off, but and not to no avail. And Lucifron's keeping tabs on that as well. But at least here, El Well Met have the watchtower control, so they can see any movements if El Nexo was to do something a little bit strange. Yep. We should, in this case, for Reyna, see actually a build that revolves a lot around taking the additional talents for Q. Usually on level 7 you have a bit of a difference when you go for the increased move speed. You can go for the Q talent with the slow here. You have to be a bit careful with this. Alistair actually has to be very careful here since he's suddenly oh. stunned out and attacked. Has Ops jumped in too, but Nomi taking a lot of damage from the towers and had to move back. Alistair finally reaches the gate and is able to heal up. And of course his passive Give Me More was also able to uh, get him back to full health. Yeah, they're going to control middle Semple whilst the top is going over to Well Met. Uh, at least Reyna, for now, can just sustain in this lane and keep on soaking a little bit of experience. So they will get a small lead there for a second, but with that tower actually falling, it all gets evened up. And all this is actually actually taking some damage from Sokka in the middle, so has to be careful. Needs to heal up on that wave. Yep, already moving in with Sonya and so far is playing the normal Sonya build. A shot of Fury on level 1 helps you out a lot since the Fury management changed in the last patch. But it was already a standard talent back then. We're having slam talents taken on level 4, usually would take it on level 7 as well. A lot of Sonya, what she does evolves around that slam, so that's what he's focusing on right now. On uh, the next level on 4 we have already the Q talent that I uh, talked about earlier on Reyna going for the confident aim here, which is really important for him since it lowers the cooldown of his ability significantly. And besides that, Vala is playing with the traditional build going into uh, the multi-shot. We're having one healing ward on the side of Tassadar, another one of course with the healing totem on the side of Rhaegar. And I guess important also to mention that Muradin in this case is going for a full Stormbolt build and tries to get up the additional damage on his Q. Uh, I really like this little move here from El Nexo to try and grab this location. As they knew Gerdamho was going to try and solo these camp pretty early on. Uh, they do try and go for the counter initiation though. Lol vs. Zixi going pretty darn low. Whilst all this is going on, he will be able to get out. 
Yeah, I got shielded there in the last second. Vortex came in with a pretty good shield, but Lucifron is now once again power sliding away. Needs to go for a face melt here, and there it is. Is able to push everybody away and then escapes. Nearly level 7 now on the side of the Spanish team. Well, next about to hit that in just a few. They're trying to go for another camp once again. Lucifron is walking right into Nomi and get him hit and can just barely move away there. The seven's now taken, and there is the Revolution Overdrive that I mentioned earlier on level 7 for Reyna. All right, so that's going to give him a little bit more in terms of that movement speed, uh, which is nice. Cleanse being taken on Uther as is normal. I've actually seen a few people uh, moving away from that and going to Wave of Light um, when they've seen that their opponents don't have as much crowd control, but when you're going up against a Brightwing, that cleanse is very, very useful. Yeah, especially when you want to keep one of your heroes alive like Sonya, it's uh, very, very helpful since she's going to be at the front all the time and she's not as tanky as ETC, so she's going to be one of the priority targets for the opponent. We're also having the Gust of Healing, of course, taken on Brightwing himself. And one of the things that's pretty important to mention here is that if you have that argument between like going either for the Q talent for the penetrating round or uh, talent on level 7 and the overdrive talent, uh, you get that additional slow on your Q, but first of all you have to of course hit that and the revolution overdrive helps you also to move away out of a bad situation, not only to chase down heroes, so it has a bit more usability. Yeah, uh, and just buffing it in general, and it gives you more options you know, when he takes obviously confident aim before, gives you more chances to end up hitting that uh, for the slow later on. But look at this, well met, I've already moved on to this South Temple very, very aggressively here. It's level 9 9, no level 10 in sight just yet for both of these teams. So, But Nomi actually took a lot of damage, as did Soki, as well, uh, El Nexo get jumped in. Yeah, nice kill against Soki here. Tacita already down and very well played by Wellmet so far. They're going for Shadowmar and Shadowmar is getting very low here. Nomi already jumping out and Shadowmar, he gets stunned with a quick spear. Lucifer nearly dead but healed again. LOL vs. 60 with a whirlwind and very, very nice fight by them. And they have nearly level 10 so there is no way that Wellmet is going to try and contest that shrine at the bot lane again. Yeah, very difficult. As we said, there's so much healing coming out of these two healers. Uh, let's take a look at those numbers, actually. Uh, so they're doing <laughs> quite a lot of sustain. Quite a lot. Uh, well, they've already got 15k across the board here. The interesting part for me personally now with the talents is, well, we were basically spot on with every single talent that we called so far. ETC, of course, going for the stage dive here. But Alistair did not decide to go into Reyna's Raiders and instead chose Hyperion. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it being a very good talent on this map in general. But as I said earlier, I kind of expected him to go into Reyna's Raider to have the additional burst damage together with uh, Sonya to get Illidan low. But of course, when you fight for those temple fights, Hyperion is a great talent to have. It's just that they don't really have a whole lot to really combo it with. So it looked like the burst damage might have been the better option, but they decided to go into uh, the AoE damage instead. And especially against structures, it is a great ult. And that's also one of the reasons why we see it a lot more often these days. Not only in Sky Temple, but also on maps like Cursed Hollow. Yeah, it, it does zone out a huge section of any lane, any map, any location uh, that you do actually throw it down. But Zocca, a little bit of trouble, has to shift on out of there up at the top, as the put Totem, as well as LOL versus XT, would have done a bit to him up there. The cool thing is just like that you have on uh, Reyna now several talents that you can take as the heroic. It's not only that one yeah, talent yeah. that you have and the rest is useless, so that's pretty cool. We have the talents, of course, the 10s now also on the side of Well Met. Reyna Vengeance, Archon with Avatar, Emerald Wind being uh, chosen, and Metamorphosis, which is going to help Illidan, of course, a lot. Oh, up at the top, the stage dive, Soccer low, trying to dimensional shift out of there, going straight into Arkon, trying to save himself. In comes Sonya, jumping in. They are not focusing the same target here. Soccer actually getting away for now, and this is getting real tricky. Soccer down, but so is Rhaegar. Ah, oh, the idea of it was really cool to stage dive in and then just burst someone down, but when they didn't get him, the sustain for, well, Met came out, uh, and even a very, very well-placed healing ward was able to keep them very, very well alive there. So, tough stuff there. Alistair wasn't present during that whole fight by the looks of things. So he was just going to walk to his death. One of the big problems that they actually had there was uh, that... Yeah, okay, bots in this case taking over. Alistair apparently with connection problems, one of the reasons why he died here. But a big problem in that last fight was that the original idea was to burst down Sokka. And Sokka went mm -hmm. into a dimensional shift just before he died. When he came out of it, he used his arc and stayed alive for a bit longer. Sonya came in and suddenly like half of the team stayed on Tacita and the other half were trying to occupy Illidan. And if they would have focused one hero together, I think they would have had a very, very good chance of winning that fight and killing a hero out immediately. But they lost a lot of time. Tesla was able to stay alive and therefore the fight started to turn and I think it was a bit of a communication problem in this case.
Yeah, it may have been. The, I mean, when you see someone as juicy as Sassadar running away, it was so, so low on health. You may, uh, the people really, really want to go and try and chase him down, but they have kept him in, in terms of the shrines. They've taken the middle one, and they are doing a little bit of damage towards that middle fort that should die off. Ah, well, Matt is still in an experience lead, and they've been doing really well. At the beginning, they fell behind, but with problems like in the last fight for well met I can turn real fast oh. after this man nice contesting here down at the bottom they steal it away and Rega was just barely in there in time here comes Lucifer nice Emerald Wind being used Hyperion as well the attempt to draw Lo Lover 60 very nice engagement here Lose from a second lot of damage, they've healed him up nicely though. Vortex also has to get out of there with a sprint. Jumps right on out. Alistair now taking a lot of damage and they will bring him down finally. This demon with this metamorphosis from Gerd I'm heard really doing work. Yeah, and that's once again just like Illidan doing his thing, and one of the reasons why I really thought they would go for Reyna's Raiders. Bursting Illidan down or really putting the damage in on him, that's going to be one of their main tasks, and I think this is something that they currently struggle with. They need to make sure that they are not losing the boss here, at least try to contest, but of course they have one hero down now, and again here comes the boss, maybe he can stun somebody, can they go for Sokka or Nomi? They're trying to! Now on the left-hand side of this boss is Hasu Ops is a bit out of position with the Valor and unable to actually fight. Nomi's going to go very, very low, but manages to get out. Unbelievable at 30 health. Yeah, oh he had God. even less than that when it started, and now they are suddenly starting to lose this, of course. It was a pretty decent fight from Well Met. They take Illidan down, and don't forget that this fight started with them being at a 4 versus 5 disadvantage. If they kill Nomi here, even with them losing the boss, they would have been able to trade one hero for two. So that was a pretty good fight for Well Met, but of course, now they trade one for one, and they have the boss pushing against them. So Well Met getting once again the edge here, and having level 16 already under the bell is, of course, great for them. Yeah, definitely. Those extra talents coming in, we're seeing um, from the bot bottom to top, because Valor hasn't taken those just yet, it's going to be Blood for Blood, Critter Eyes, Stone Form, and then we have Second Strike, with Valor deciding, deciding, I, I guess between the idea of Execution or Blood for Blood, but for me it's Blood for Blood, it's got to be. Yeah, for, for Vala, uh, usually you would see Blood for Blood. It's just like the survivability that you have, and if you're having uh, someone that can jump in like uh, Sonya, Blood for Blood is usually the option. I feel on Vala, you don't see Execution all that often anymore, and if you do, then you have to have a really good lineup that is relying a lot on the stuns. Exactly. With Arthurs, for example, I can still see that, but yeah. Another fight coming into play here. We have a 5 versus 5 again, but the 16 versus 15 situation is a bad one for El Nexo, and they're moving back once more. It's really interesting to see how El Nexo is struggling with this right now. They had a great start into the game, and then with two bad fights, they kind of gave that up. It's going to be tricky for them to just like come back into this. They're trying to rotate down to the bot lane to take the shrine, but they still do not have level 16. And Brightwing is going to take that top temple so easily able to reinforce in case some kind of engagement goes on. You just get a few shots off, which is very, very nice. And El Nexo, yeah, just racing to 16, trying to get that. They know that it's going to be very, very difficult to end up fighting on a temple if that's to come along. And I would so, so close. mind ETC just jumping up to the top and trying to contest the shrine for now, now that they know that everybody else is at the bot lane. Then that's they have not the a bad idea. With that, they could like delay that for a bit longer, force a reaction from the rest of the team, try to get the 16 talent, but instead he goes to the top, goes for split push, and will jump into the fight of the bot lane right now. Because Lola vs. 16 is team, they are, in, they are engaging now. The full build on Q now for Reyna, and that's going to be great for them. Suddenly they have Bullseye, and Hazu goes down immediately, and Sokka needs to dimension shift away. He will die as well. There's no way he survives that. There's no way. And yeah, he goes. too much. Too much chase, too much chase. Good, I'm going to run out there as well as Hyperion starts pushing down that lane uh, with the rest of them. But that was a good fight. Good patience to not take that before level 16 was hit. ETC doing work up to the top left. Uh, but now Shadow Mare has gotten away and is being annoying up towards top keep. So at least they can try and get some damage done whilst all this is being pushed up bot. You know, he didn't get away. He never jumped in. And that's one of the things that that's I point. find a little bit weird because, well, he could always have tried to just like disengage with the uh, Emerald Wind, but for some reason they maybe they decided or he made a mistake. I'm not quite sure which it was, but it's I would suppose that they would have told him if they needed him there. So he didn't jump in, didn't help them out. That's why they lost two. He could push the top lane at the same time to a certain extent, but I don't think that makes up for losing two heroes and the bottom shrine like this. I swear I heard the noise of him teleporting in, but he must have cancelled it, or, or something. Or he teleported on one of the heroes that was dying. 
Maybe, maybe, yeah. But regardless of the fact, now El Nexo are right back in this, really. Uh, of course, they had a little bit of a bump there, a speed bump, but they are about to get level 18, which will help them considerably keep up once it gets towards those level 20 talents. Well, we have now 17, as you said, versus 18. Oh no, and there comes the attempted kill oh. against Shadow Can he uses all these speeds himself up and is just getting away. But they had, of course, to use the healing ward already. Here comes Hazops. Oh, that was a really bad ult by him. I was, uh, was trying to catch someone, didn't catch anybody. But Lord uh. 60 is kind of low. They're jumping in once more. Lucifer is suddenly split off the rest of the team. Oh, that was, a, that was the wrong direction, buddy. Yeah, it definitely was. L L Lover 6, he actually took a few of the Blood for Bloods there, but didn't die off. So there was a little um, cooldown at the moment here for Well Met, who are trying to kill off Lucifer. <laughs> but the sustain of Vortex and Grand PKT, they're just they're never going to die. I can't the believe it. The cow is alive. Oh, <laughs> unbelievable. That was unbelievable. Like, he was already to the right side of yeah. the boss, and he made it through five heroes and got away with ancestral healing and everything, just hitting him the entire time to heal him up. It was really nice. The sustain on him is insane. Of course, the imposing presence was a huge factor in there. That level 16 talent that they have on mm. Uther and on ETC is just amazing for keeping heroes alive. And without that, he would have died, like, three times over. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was pretty brutal, but I can't believe he actually managed to get out during that. As for now, they're going to have to try and rival this top temple. Brightwing is going to try and teleport in here this time. Does get in, but El Nexo have seized location. So looks like this might just be given up here by them. Oh, or do they wrap around and try to come in from behind after Hyperion is gone? Looks like that might be the idea that they go for that now. But yeah, 19 versus 18. That's the fight that we've been waiting for. Storm's already hitting. Arkan is there. And we have Illidan jumping in. Lucifon is getting low, but so is Hazops. Hazops with his ult trying to save himself. They're going for him. Lord of the is low, but Hazu, he's the main DPS. He stays alive. He gets away. Lucifon is dropping instead. They still don't get Hazu. He's still alive. And oh my god, they were able to kill even Rega before. He dropped Vala. Very well played here, and oh boy, is well met suddenly doing damage here. Now, so gonna die on the retreat out, and Vortex Lol versus XD have to get out of there. This is gonna trigger boss straight down there. They've got plenty of their opposing heroes dead. May as well go and grab that, give themselves a strong push down the bottom. And I mean, there's another 30 or so seconds before all these guys uh, get Rimmick get up, so they could happily get easy camp and make that a really strong push at bottom. I really like the way that Valmet is playing. We have to give them some credit for that. I did not yeah. expect them to play this well. The last time that I saw them against El Nexo, they were completely destroyed by their opponent. They look way better prepared this time. I really like it. Gerd actually... <laughs> you see that gets stunned by the boss and messed his Q up for a second. Um, has of course no consequence since El Nexo is still down three players, so it was kind of funny to see. <laughs> but yeah, they, they dominate this right now and i really impressed. They are playing very well compared compared to the last few times when we've seen them on the stream. Right now they have the rewind on uh, Muradin. They are going for the continuous wins on Brightwing. Apparently Illidan isn't quite sure if he should go for the Nexus Blades, for his Blink or for Demonic Form. Decides in favor of Blink as does Vala. And now they are of course trying to uh, kill the second keep. And it's going to take a lot, a lot of damage. Very difficult to stop a five-man push here with the boss as well. ETC is up to the top, so he's not committing to the five-man, five-man just yet. This is definitely going to fall. They really need to take down this boss, though. It could do some damage. Yeah, they are going for core now. They want to finish this. And, uh, well, ETC won't be able to do too much in terms of trying to aim for 20. Hazu Ops is so... Oh, oh my god, that's safe with the Reign of Vengeance. Killing Uth out. Hazu Ops is safe again. Lol vs. 60 is dying out too. And, well, this kind of has to be the conclusion here, right? Yeah, that Reign of Vengeance at the very end, about four of them were lined up in that, and unfortunately they get absolutely yeah. slammed. G there you go. G is called. And yeah, this is game. Game number one ending up in the favor of Will Met taking the 1-0 in the best of three series. Congratulations. Game number one taken by Wilmet. They are able to win the first map here against El Nexo, something that very few people really expected. And the second map is going to be a very interesting one as well, because the comp that's already been chosen here by Wilmet and El Nexo couldn't be different. We have a double healer comp again for El Nexo. They have a bit more DPS this time, but they are still relying on the double healer strategy. And then looking at what we are seeing for Wilmet, that's where it becomes extremely interesting as well, because they decided to not go for a healer at all. 
all. They have supports with Taranda and also Tassada, but they don't have a dedicated healer. And that is actually a composition that they've played against El Nexo just recently in the best of three series that they lost. But apparently since then, they still practice with that composition and they must have a lot of faith in it because El Nexo, of course, wants to tie the series up now and bring it into a third map. But well met, they're very, very confident that their build is going to work out against El Nexo. So we're gonna jump into game number two here at the ESL Major League. And we're trying to find out who is going to be the victor of map number two. Are we gonna see a third map between them? Or will Well Met take the best of three series with a 2-0? Let's find out together. Game number two on Cursed Hollow at the ESL Major League. We're having El Nexo going up against Well Met, and right now El Nexo is down one game in the best of three series. Well Met able to win the match on Sky Temple. We're looking to the left side now on El Nexo with Vortex on Uther, Lolver 60 on Zeratul, Alastor on Sergeant Hammer, Karan Pakete on Rega, and Lucifron on Chen. To the right side in red it is Hazo Ops for Will Met on Vala, Get Amhead on Azebo, Shadow Ma on Tyranda, Nomi on Murden, and Soccer on Tassada. So in this case we're having well met without a designated healer here in this comp. A comp that they played against El Nexo before and lost in a different tournament though. So let's find out if they can win it here. I'm Carlo with Miss Calaris and we're gonna jump right into the game here on Cursed Hollow, the second match between Well Met and El Nexo. Alright, so El Nexo currently four in the middle looking for whatever they can find. Hasu and Shadow Mare. Just sat in the bush, not really finding too much. Nomi and Zoka quite far out to what in air enemy territory, but Hasu and Shadow Mare do come in from the right hand side, lock down the loose Vortex, and well, they will be able to get out. Yeah, Vortex is barely getting away there, and once again, the level 1 healing ward on Grand Paquetta's Rega helps a lot. Sentinel taken, or Pierce, I should say, taken on level 1, the Sentinel talent for Tyranda. Very likely that we're therefore also going to see the same uh, uh, skill being boosted on level 16 then with the Ranger instead of the second Lunar Flare talent. So a bit more DPS on her, not going for those comps where you just like try to have a Hunter's Mark ready every single time that your uh, ah, tank can throw a stun, but there we have the attempt anyways. Vortex getting very, very low, healing himself, and he just stays alive. Life without a double healer, that hero is lost. Close, close, close. As he's gonna have to move back to Shadow Mai, get himself a little bit of health, and he'll join up with Nomi once again just to go on that roam. And if they could find a hammer kill down to the bottom, that would be fantastic. But Hammer's always gonna be very, very wary because he knows, uh, even going into the start of this game, that this was gonna be the roaming comp. This is also a very, very funny situation if you think about the team comps in general. It's a double healer comp against a no healer comp. Disregarding True. for a second <laughs> that Tyranda has a bit of heal, which El Nexo, sorry, Well Met is of course going to rely upon to a certain extent. And don't forget the double healing what they were going to see from Tassada and Tyranda. But yeah, that roaming squad is going to the top again. Nomi and Shadow Ma on the way, but the kill against Nazebo hits first. Vortex is paying with his life for it though. Yeah, that's a nice counter initiation there from Shadow Mare as well as Nomi. And they knew something was up, they realized that they were missing from mid, so they had to be somewhere. And Lucifer on actually taking a bit of damage as well, but it's a Chen, so he probably won't die at this point. Chen's die? When did that happen? <laughs> did Blizzard change something? Not too often, my friend. <laughs> Tyranna waiting here for the healing ward still. We're having for both of the teams one gathering power taken as of course Lord vs. XT on Zaratul picked the talent. On level 1 he went for the Greater Cleave, which we actually see less and less these days. Instead it's most of the time block or the reduction in cooldown on blink. But in this case we are still having Cleave being used. On level 4 for Rega, a very important talent, Farsight, which is just extremely good. It's like the best revelation talent that you have there, because you can always just use it every 30 seconds and have your vision for 10. Oh, Vortex in the mid lane again, falling victim to that comp with Nomi stun on Stormbolt and, of course, Shadow Mars Taranda. Yeah, he got uh, d uh, he got aggressive at just the wrong time <laughs> when he threw down the stun on on well met, and then unfortunately the other two came in right after that had happened. So a little bit unfortunate there was Vortex, and now they get that trip basically free down to the bot. But obviously Chen and Gerdam heard not moving at all from the top because they want that lovely experience. 
Yeah, and in experience they're still on a very, very similar level. Two kills against one, so in that there's not a big difference between them. Chen is going for Brewmaster's balance there, or for Swift Reflexes, sorry, on level 4. Brewmaster's balance is going to hit now on level 7, I suppose. Yep, there it is. We're having a double uh, first aid that's been taken by Zeratul and also by Sergeant Hammer. Zeratul's build changed after the last patch significantly on this talent. Now we're seeing first aid picked nearly exclusively, since the cleave talent that you would take before that got moved to 16. Mm -hmm. Which does change things a lot, you're right. And now, Tribute has been put up at the top, so who's going to be able to really rival this? I think that uh, they might might have to give this up. With Shadow Mare and Nomi already well in position, they could do a lot to anybody who comes in. They're not really going for that just yet. They still had the hard camp taken. They're going to try and just like stun that out for as long as they can, delay it, and maybe then rotate a bit later. But Zeratul, as you can see, is still going into the mid lane. It's just like trying to delay it for as long as they can and buy some time. Oh, and actually pushed it away. They looked for some damage up on top for Lucifron, but again, going on to Lucifron here is a little bit difficult. He is going to survive quite heavily, and good delays here so far by Grandpa Ket as well as Vortex. Yeah, that's by some time. Oh, nice! Hazel's being attacked here. Lot of her 60s. Job in this game is, of course, to put pressure on those squishies. Uh -oh. oh, and Hazel's gets taken out. Lucifer jumping in on the Brewmaster. But yeah, putting pressure on Vala with Zeratul and then Chen to finish the job. Well done. Well coordinated as well. Yeah, had to pick up that kill, had to pick up that tribute. Considering that we have Sokka still at bot lane doing some damage here, soaking that experience, whilst Hammer was away for a little while uh, during all of that as well. Yeah, incredible hits now with a Storm Talent against the tower at the bot lane. Sokka not able to kill that, but mm -hmm. close. But yeah, that's of course one of the most important talents that you have on the hero, the static charge on level 7, so that he can get those crits and you rely a lot on those if you really want to do the damage, and that's what he's currently trying to do. Alistair is pushing him back. Mm, might take a little bit of damage here if he's not careful though. He realizes everything had been rotated. Here come the level 10 talents. It's going to be Reign of Vengeance, Avatar, Archon, Starfall, and finally, probably Ravaging Spirit, just saying, <laughs> on, uh, on the Nazebo. We've seen actually a few times Kagansion, very, very like rare the talent yeah. still, but sometimes against, for example, Sonya uh, compositions, if you look at LDLC, they pick Kagansion because they say if we go into Ravenous, we're going to be stunned out immediately when we use it, so we're going to get more out of, a, we're going to get more out of like the, wor the, the, the worst talent mm -hmm. than the good one because of that immediate stun reaction from the opponent. So it's pretty cool to see that, but I mean, in 95% of the cases, you still have the Ravenous spirit, which is obviously going to do the better job. Yep. It does a lot, lot of damage if you're able to get it off. Um, I think in the NA scene it's very, very highly regarded, even more so than the European scene, but mm. well, for now, they can't get anywhere near that trip. Good zoning out there by Shadowmare and Nomi that were waiting, lying in wait for anything to come along, but you know, Alnex tried to do some damage at the middle. Didn't even get any of those towers, but they're very low now to just be brought down quickly. I personally love to see, uh, by the way, uh, Gagansion. I kind of had to play. Uh, not, uh, Nazebo is a great hero, but it's not really my favorite to play. But I had to yeah. play him for a couple of uh, things. And I named my Gagansion. It's called Richie. And Richie <laughs> on the map is like amazing. You can have a lot of fun with him. But now at the bot lane, it is Hansorps, who might actually a bit too far out, gets healed, heals himself actually, and Vortex is jumping in and wants to uh -oh. try and stun out Hansorps, healing what is there, and the cleave, and Hazu. oh yes, oh my god, he survives! Ah, able to dodge the Divine Storm and just get out of there overall, that was cool stuff there. Unbelievable. Hazops was like, I mean, he was dead in the water. It's like, I didn't even yeah. see that hit point bar anymore. And suddenly he survives and gets a shield. That was crazy good by Wilmet. The problem for them, of course, is that they're so far behind in experience that they are going to uh, lose out on talents now. And it's an important tribute to fight for. At least for El Nexo, that is. I feel that Wilmet has to let that go. Definitely. Here comes Sprint. We've got Wormhole, Giant Killer, Feral Lunge, as well as Relentless being taken all the way down this line. And, well, that's is a big problem that allows that to go away so now the next tribute is going to be super important 13 has to come in very soon here for well met thankfully of course it will before that next trip spawns yeah giant killer is really interesting on sergeant hammer i like the 13 talent on her a lot because you have so many options right now since we've seen teams go for all kinds of things we've seen a lot go for the spider mines where only of course the one in the middle is now really pushing the opponent away we've seen some of them taking barricade one of the heroes that or, or one of the players that does it a lot is for example bakery 
for SK Gaming. Had a lot go for Giant Killer now as well. So this is one of those talents where you just have so many options and all of them are roughly on the same level. All right, here come the reinforcements for this wall. Uh, they really need to eliminate this hard camp from doing a little bit too much more damage here. We've seen well-met position themselves on uh, down to the bottom and on the way to the right, so just pushing out that lane of the bomb. Tacita still thinking about going for pre-science or going for Shrink Ray here. Mm. I like it that he waits with the talent and just waits what is going to be more important for him. And it is pre-science, so it uh, goes for that. That will give him a lot more tankiness and, of course, the ability to get away. Uh, activating that second dimensional shift as now the second or the third tribute for both of the teams is activated. Yeah, very, very important now to see who is going to be able to get this one. Nomi actually leaps on in, straight on Ponta Lucifron. He's going to be able to tank quite a bit though there. Also healed, kicks back and is actually going to go for the Wandering Keg, pushing some of them away and actually isolating quite heavily. Yeah, pushing them all into the team right now. Here comes the ultimate though. I really did not like that ult from Lucifron at mm. all. I mean, we can talk about this in a second. For, well, I guess now that the, the two of them are already dead and Lucifron is trying to get away, he's going to be taken out as well. Yeah, yeah, there it is. It didn't do the job he wanted it to, that's for sure. Yeah, I think he didn't achieve anything. Yeah. He didn't isolate a hero. He basically pushed the entire opponent's team into his team. Uh, didn't isolate a hero. Didn't also wait until Nazeev was trying to use his ult. Uh, which would have then, of course, interrupted that, which you see from a lot of uh, chens. And another problem that he had, after he was done with the Wandering Kick, Nazebo was in a great position to use his ultimate in the first place, which was, that did not really help them. That actually was very counterproductive. Yeah, not much. That's, uh, that's a tough situation to be in here for Alnexu, who are now cursed, and there's the potential that they'll lose this boss if they don't react accordingly and properly to it. Of course, they have a little bit more mana here uh, going into this next fight than what we're seeing from Wellmet, but they've already taken it. They had to give it up, so two bosses pushing each lane and the curse. Wellmet is not having the best of days. They played really well at the beginning, like it surprises me, they were a level ahead, they had level 13 when their opponent had level 12, and now suddenly just in the blink of an eye and with one really bad oh. team fight, Vortex gets oh. taken out! Ancestral they, healing was like so close to popping, yeah, but... They are so, so screwed right now, I mean, 16 talent already, stone form taken, we have Thunderclub on 13, probably for the additional damage, yes, there it is. Specialized Toxins for Nazebo, Vala is going to go for Blood for Blood, and Taranda, is she going for the Ranger's talent? So of course, by the way, Pierce is also amazing on this talent to mm, disrupt yeah. if your opponent is taking, uh, trying to take a curse, so it's not the only reason that they want to do damage here. But this is very, very surprising. Big blunder by, by Alnex in the last team fight, and they pay the price for it right now. Oh, they paid a huge price. They're going to try and push them back here. Nomi goes a little bit far in, but he's healing up quite considerably anyway, thanks to the stone form and able to just kind of sustain through all of that. But at least LOL versus XT catches one with the Void Prism. Nomi might take a lot of damage here. They've got to support him, but... Yeah. Now, once again, Wandering Keg. This time they try to go for Tyranda, and they get her. Much better right now. They need to take those two healing wards down, but actually, uh, well, next, well, Met moves away from them. They can't fight here. They have one hero down already, so Nomi is going to die there too. Question is, can they kill more than that? And as Sokka is being attacked, there's a very high chance that he is going to fall as well. Yeah, he was uh, very, very close to being able to mount up and just get out of there, but that's not going to be the case. So they get a little bit of a consolation prize after losing a keep in the middle, having both of those golems doing quite a lot of damage, but at least breaking through the walls. They really need to grab themselves like a fort or two here off the back of this to El Nexo. Mm. I mean, we're still in a situation where you can really see that in terms of healing, well, Met is not doing as bad as you would have suspect, just because the double healing ward is doing so much, and in both of the fights that we've seen so far, the double healer lineup didn't really have a chance to heal a lot since they died first in those fights. Especially, um, I feel that Uther had a pretty bad time. He was like one stunned out in the mid lane as well when they were taking the hard camp, so that was of course a problem for him. But once they get their heal up, I think that Well, Met is going to have a bit of a tougher time. They're starting to lose now the mid lane. So as the game progresses, I would give the advantage here to El Nexo still, even though that one fight really put them in a very, very bad spot, as we already mentioned, even losing a keep in the mid lane now. But yeah, they are definitely not out of this yet. Well, they get very powerful at level 20 once that comes along, that's for sure. As this trip's going to spawn, and they definitely want to contest this. If they get it, they do get the curse on their opposing side. So at least for now... Oop. 
Has to reposition himself. Those owls doing a lot of damage. 800 damage going in there to Lol versus XD. Uh, once again, down here with a 5 versus 5 going for the tribute that would put a curse on them. As you already said, Lol versus 60 can you with the warm holder jump in, get this double bombs and just move away. We're having also blood for blood taken on Rega, imposing presence on Uther. It's gonna make him survive probably a bit more from that right click damage. Nice stuff all that we're seeing here. They might have to wrap around at the bot line. Yeah, going maybe for Zocke here. Starfall is not gonna last forever either. No, and uh, nobody's died just yet from loose on the uh, El Nexo side of things. As the zombie wall is extremely annoying for him, but this fight is gonna continue on. They have more sustain on the side here of Vortex and Grandpa Cat being able to heal these guys up. So I will not cast the around here forever. Yeah, they won't be, but they have also now down at bot lane. Gadam had in a good position for his ultimate. He's not using it just yet. He waits for the fight to really start. Lucifer is jumping in. Here comes the keg, and Gadam Head is soon using his own oh. skill. And there it is. But Tirana is already down. Vortex is a bit in trouble as he gets hit by the Reign of Vengeance. Vortex stuns. One out, gets his ult in. He goes down. Uther is now dead. Vala is dead as well, though. And suddenly we're having well met on the run. No, they start to turn it around with Nomi at the front. They're trying to, they're trying, but Zok is going to be very, very low. He doesn't have Archon to save him at all. There's a shift, but he is going to fall. And Gerd I'm Her and Nomi have to get out of there. I liked how Gerd I'm Her tried to use his ultimate there. Of course, it was doing quite a bit of damage, but he used his zombie wall on the left-hand side on that bush just in case somebody was there, but it also will block anybody coming around to try and stop him. But it was a well-timed, a well-placed Void Prism that shut him down for just a little bit. But what I really have to say is that El Nexo seems to be struggling against his ult. In the last fight that we had, like the fight that snowballed everything, he had a perfect ult. He could get it the whole duration through. And yep. even in this fight, it lasted nearly the entire duration. Yeah, so the they have a lack of heroes that can really shut him down. So far, we are basically seeing three, that, but one of them has to get really close, and Uther just has to be in a different spot. I'm just not so sure if uh, Lucifer should really use his ult this fast. They, of course, are trying uh, to isolate a hero to initiate the fight, but it's very tricky for them if they don't keep taps on the Zeebo. They're going to have a hard time really contesting this up to the top left-hand corner. Uh, Right-hand corner, even, I should say, is Uther's now on the way to support this. They took a fort to the middle because they, they are indeed cursed. So at least that gives them a catch-up in experience. And now Lovers is actually going on to Hasu. Hasu did so much damage, though, with that blood-for-blood blood tap off. Yeah, but with the double healer, they're still in a good spot. Gadam Head is using his ult. If they can get away now, that's all that they need to do. Lucifer is this time cancelling that immediately. Here comes the Rega ultimate, saving him for now. They're already moving back, waiting out the Archon 2. There is still Void Prism and also the Uther stun available. Uh, Vortex taking quite a bit of damage, but uh, oh, that Void Prism. If they can follow it up with something, but the Uther did fall, so there's no extra little power to this. As Lucifer also dies off as well. The Void Prism didn't do a huge amount, really. Yeah, the Void Prison, I mean, uh, Uther, you could really see how Uther was trying to move in and do the damage, and the immediate call by Well Met, drop him, drop him now. And they were focusing him as fast as they could. They got a stun in the later, and of course the Uther Ghost himself can also then do quite a lot. But there's really a ton of damage on the opponent's lineup. And fighting in this situation, that didn't really help them, so that spot worked against them. Uh, yeah, well met with all the damage that they have. They are doing really well. And so far, I, I, I'm missing the synergy a bit on the side of El Nexo. Yeah, it's it's as if they had to pick a damage dealer at the very end. And as much as, yes, Zeratul is a great hero, uh, it's, I mean, with the Void Prism uh, and them not able to engage as properly as they would like, if Void Prism goes down and then they get a Divine Storm off the back of behind that once everything goes on. But that was a prolonged fight where Divine Storm was already on cooldown, etc. So I think it was, it was kind of tough there. To be frank, though, I think when we reach level 20, well, Med has a big problem. Just because there are going to be great talents for El Nexo. Yeah. Well, Matt is going to have, of course, a nice increase in this as well, but we're probably going to see a Storm Shield on Tyranda. Um, then we have, a, yes, a double stun on Muradin, but that doesn't really compare to the double double bombs that you have on Zeratul. So I feel the level 20 talent is going to be much, much better for El Nexo. Mm. The problem is they might take too many losses until they reach it. Yeah, they might. If we can see a really good engagement here from Well Matt, actually just pushing on forwards, they're going to go towards core, and they're all very, very healthy here. Uh, of course, the Annihilating Spirit is now on cooldown, but Lucifer is going to take a lot of damage, and the Void Prism is going to be able to save him for a lot. Yeah, uh, 
actually, like the Void Prism in a decent spot. Oh. The Kira Vortex just barely gets away thanks to the healing ward. And that core is not gonna fall. Lucifron might, though. They're trying to heal him and he's gonna be able to get away. But now with the level 20 talents, we're having the increased increased range and attack speed for Sergeant Hammer. There's also the Rewind on LOL vs. XD and now they're starting to chase. Nice Lunar Flare dropping Lucifron, at least making him regret his decision to chase them this fast. But now it's still 20 versus 20. Two keeps down and nine kills against nine. So this is now going to be a very, very interesting one because the level 20 talent gave El Nexo a huge boost. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the wave clear here for Hammer just to end up shutting down all of these waves as they come along is going to be very, very quick. So even though they've lost keeps, they can still plow through that. Uh, and then, of course, you know, Chen actually getting in there with his hardened shield and just being able to throw that up is going to be even tankier than he was before. So it's going to be difficult to really deal with him, especially if they take engagements towards Tribs where it is in narrow locations and he gets a good wandering keg. If he can isolate one or two people in this fight, uh, then it could completely turn around. Uh, we are talking three squishes on the side of Wellmet, and especially Tyranda is low in HP, just even when she's at full yeah. HP. So, Lord vs. XD, <laughs> it can put a lot of pressure on her now with the rewind. We're having a much, much easier stun on Uther against the entire opponent's team, or even only against Nazebo, depending on what he wants. We're seeing the near invulnerability for four seconds on Chen, which is going to be great when he starts jumping in with his Wandering Keg and comes out of it. And we're, of course, also seeing that extra damage that exists on Sergeant Hammer. So, in a straight-up fight, so, or even like in a prolonged one, I would definitely give the edge now to El Nexo. They've lost two of the keeps, which is a big, big problem to them. But in the fights, they should do better right now. I still have to say that I am very, very impressed once again by how well Matt plays today. They got against El Nexo just a week ago absolutely destroyed without having a chance in the world. And right now they are not only ahead in the best of three series, but they are playing a great game with a comp that the last time didn't do anything for them. So I am very, very impressed. Great play by them today. Yeah, and they are doing very, very well. So far they are staring down. Uh, a 2-0 victory if they can just find even just one or two kills if they were able to get them uh, in uh, an ambush, anything like that, then that will make it considerably harder here for El Nexo to really pull back because those bottom two lanes are being pushed pretty hard constantly and, well, here comes the tribute. I don't think they're going to contest it, El Nexo. I really don't. Oh... Yeah, well, I mean, they they could. What we're trying, what we're seeing here from Well Met is just like trying to catch the opponent at some point and uh, maybe get a kill in there. It's of course also a question on when exactly those bosses are going to come up again. Mm, yeah, we have a position for Hazobs, but they apparently are waiting for the rest of El Nexo to move up. But uh, Taranda is already going for the tribute, and it looks like we're seeing Lucifer and Vortex and his team just like moving straight for that uh, fort and uh, killing that out. They can't. Nope, they're not taking it bit surprised by that. I guess they are afraid that there might be a backdoor attempt towards the top keep, which could yeah. definitely happen since it's already on half HP. So, Yeah, if they lose that keep up there, it's going to make it even more laborious uh, to try and get back into this game. Dealing with three waves of cannon minions is a bit annoying. Um, catapults, whatever you want to call them. It's kind of impossible, I feel. You have mm. to really win a team fight big time to have those death timers come into play and save you so that you can move out and do the damage yeah. because catapults, they really wreck that core if a few of them get into a good position. But it's 9 kills versus 9 kills and I'm very, very looking forward to that. Like, I'm very excited about the next team fight and both of the teams are trying to lay traps now. Yeah, might be over Golem. Uh, and if Golem goes here for well met, then that's going to have a field day up to the top. But... El Nexo knows this. They're repositioning themselves just around the vicinity, making sure nothing's going on. They saw the direction where the owl was coming from there, so they know whereabouts Wellmet are without having too much info. Mm. 27,000 damage on that panda, 16,000 on Azura Tool, and 50,000 on Sergeant Hammer. They heal 110,000 for El Nexo. For Wellmet, we have 46, so not even half of it, all thanks to the healing wards, which also don't have burst heal. What really helps here, of course, is that Soccer has his 13 talent that keeps him alive with a double dimensional shift. And we're seeing Meridian with a stone form, which is important. And they might have to give this up. They're looking to move down towards their bottom left hand boss, or even just try and rival this. And, well, well, Matt is apparently not wanting to take the fight. They're going to give this one up and go up to their own boss, start that up for quickly. And it's just going to be boss for boss. But. In my opinion, boss for boss works out better for well met because they have so many forts and so many keeps still alive. 
the boss should have a very good shot at dropping the top four, at uh, the top keep. I'm a bit surprised that we see uh, El Nexo not moving up and try to contest that because they had all the time in the world to do that. The yeah. move from Wilmet to the top lane to get the boss was very, very late, so it wouldn't have been a problem at all for them to just go in. I think they were very afraid that they might run into a trap and very cautious about that. They also have to de push the bottom lane where three catapults are now pushing in against the core, so that's important. But they will probably lose the top keep as well now. And even a few siege golems are going to be with this. Uh, siege giant team, and I should say, are going to be with this. So. Yeah, there's no, there's almost no way that they can keep this keep alive. That golem will do a lot. The siege giants as well. They really need to kill those off fast. Thankfully, Alistair is there already working on those. Uh, siege giants are not going to make it for long. But that boss is a completely different story. Bottom lane, the fort already dropped, and the boss for El Nexo making it towards the keep now. Nice ult there on uh, God I'm hurt for now. But here come oh great, great team ult. But Vortex oh. is trying. We have Nazebo already down, so that damage is gone. Lucifer is starting to barrel Nomi away. The boss is still alive. They need to be careful about that. They can heal up. They have a bit of an advantage since they are fighting at their own core. But that core is being attacked right now. LOL vs. 60 is still alive. Uh, this is going to be... Uh, this could be game. Yeah, they can't stop it. They can't stop it. Even get stunned there by the golem. And they are going to fall. And well met. Take this series 2-0 against El Nexo. Really impressive and great job by well met. Congratulations. Taking the best of three at the ESL Major League. Well met has done it. They took down El Nexo. And for El Nexo, this is a horrible spot to be in, in the Major League now. They only won a single best of three. They lost three of them. That puts them into a very, very tough position and will make it very difficult for them to reach the playoffs. On the other hand, well met, playing an exceptional game today. Very impressive to see them not only win the best of three series, but to do so without even dropping a single map. Their comms worked out very well for them. Their team play was exceptional. And this was quite something that we've seen uh, by the team here. So very well done by them. They are now two and two in the ESL Major League. And I can't wait to see more games from them in the next few weeks in the major league itself so guys i hope that you enjoyed the video today if you did you know the routine like the video on youtube if you have question about the compositions or anything else drop a comment in the comment section and if you haven't subscribed to color tv just yet then you should definitely do so see you guys next time with the next video of heroes of the storm here on color tv